If the ship poses a threat to us, we have to eliminate that threat. Ooh, I like that. Did you see it like fire its thrusters like that? Hello, sci-fi fans. We're reacting to the physics of Battlestar Galactica today. But first, I've got to hold up my hands up and say I have never seen a single episode of this show. I know nothing about it except that there is a lot of love for it. So I'm intrigued to start watching so I can separate out, you know, the science from the fiction for you all. Remember, this is all just a little bit of fun so we can learn something cool about the universe. So we're just going to dive in, watch the very first episode of the reboot, season one, episode one, which is called 33. <laughs> So FTL means faster than light and they did a faster than light speed jump there and I feel like I say this in every like react video I do now but faster than light travel definitely falls into the fiction side of science fiction. So under the laws of physics as we currently understand them nothing can go faster than the speed of light. That's what Einstein's theory of special relativity told us. Essentially like if you wanted to accelerate something to the speed of light you would need an infinite amount of energy to do it. Like you could just keep on putting more and more energy in, but you would never reach that magic number of 299,792,458 meters per second or around about 300,000 kilometers a second. I've actually made a whole video on this before, but essentially it comes down to this idea of mass and energy being the same thing, i.e. Einstein's equation E equals mc squared. The most famous equation in the world, and yet that is actually sort of a simplified version for when an object is at rest. If an object is moving, that equation actually becomes E squared equals M squared times C4 plus P squared times C squared. E is your energy, M is your mass, C is the speed of light, and P is your momentum. And if you remember high school physics, momentum is your mass times by your velocity or your speed. So if you want to increase your speed, you have to increase your momentum by putting in extra energy. But as you get close to the speed of light and you put more energy in, it's not your speed that increases, it's your mass. The faster you go, the heavier you get. And as you work through the equations, you can plot it out, you know, and see that as you approach the speed of light, both your mass and your momentum just shoot up towards infinity. And there's no bigger number than infinity, so there's no faster speed than the speed of light. So this is definitely rooted in fiction, at least. You know, that's how we understand the laws of physics today. It could be that there's a way of shortcutting or like quantum tunneling to go faster than the speed of light. Who knows? We just don't know it yet. A hundred and thirty hours without sleep. That's like five days. Is that even possible for a human to last five days without sleep? Should have got Dr. Mike to react to this, jeez. How long can a human go without sleep? Back in 1963, a 17 year old made it 11 days and 25 minutes without sleep. It's part of a science fair project, what a commitment. Ugh. That sounds horrific. Although it is unclear exactly how long humans can survive without sleep. You learn something new every day. The day, so. Why have they all gone sure. without sleep for that long? Surely they could like, you know, tag team it. Like one team up for 12 hours, another team up for 12. Like what? See, you tell me they've got 49,000 people and they can't do shift work. They all have to be awake for 130 hours. Eh? Make it make sense. It's like it's not just science versus fiction now. It's kind of like common sense versus fiction. I can't write now because the excellent. Oh, that he was silent. You know what? I don't give a frack. Did she just say frack? Is this like in the good place where they say fork instead? <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking. I want to watch Battlestar Galactica, but it's not available to stream in my country. Well, what if there was something that could help with that and keep you safe 
online. That's exactly what a VPN does, which is handy because this video is sponsored by Private Internet Access. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and it helps to protect you and your private information online. Whenever you connect to the internet using an unprotected device, whether that's a computer or your phone or a tablet, you're sending out a huge amount of information out into the open, which can be viewed by anyone on the same Wi-Fi network as you, whether that's your credit card information, your location, or even just like personal communications. Using the internet without private internet access is VPN is like leaving your phone unlocked and unattended so anyone can just pick it up. But private internet access helps protect your personal data by encrypting your internet connection through their world-class server infrastructure which shields your information from any hackers. So what's this got to do with watching Battlestar Galactica? Well, many websites and streaming service limit what content is available on them depending on your location. Private internet access helps you overcome these restrictions by giving you the option to change your IP address to one of 91 countries or any of the 50 US states, allowing you to gain access to websites and services that are only available in those locations. Like the content available on the UK Amazon Prime, including all four series of Battlestar Galactica. The reason I love private internet access is because it's available on all platforms and with just one subscription you get an unlimited number of devices so it's just so easy knowing that all my devices are protected all at once which is why I use it all the time. Look there's no risk in trying private internet access because they have a 30 day money back guarantee. So try them out today by clicking on the link in the video description below and you'll get an additional four months free on your subscription which is an incredible deal for all of you. So thanks again to private internet access for sponsoring this video and now let's get back to reacting to Battlestar Galactica. Jump 238 complete. Start the clock. 33 minutes. Mark. The thing that I can't wrap my head around for this episode is like, okay, so the Cylons, they keep appearing every like 33 minutes, right? And everyone's like, why is it 33 minutes? And the thing is, there'll be time dilation at work here because 33 minutes to them when they're stationary, that's how long they think, you know, time has passed. But then to the Cylons somewhere else, like a different stretch of time could have passed. So this is again, something that Einstein's special relativity tells us that if you're traveling close to the speed of light, then you're experiencing time and distances differently. So the faster you're traveling, like the less time you experience compared to someone who is stationary. And also the shorter distances appear to you as well. And most people, really struggled to like wrap their head around this. I know when I first learned it, I was like, what, why, that doesn't really make sense. And what helped me was to think about like the classic equation, speed equals distance over time. If the speed can't change because that's set at the speed of light, then it has to be either the distance or the time that changes. Time dilation and length contraction. So for these people on the ships, they're experiencing 33 minutes when they're stationary, but to the Cylons, if they're traveling much faster, then it could only be like a few minutes have passed or like barely any time at all. Like it could be that they're making a jump as soon as, you know, faster than light speed jump, which we know it's not possible. Like as soon as they go, but they experience like this 33 minutes extra almost like lag because of the fact that like for the Cylons, it's only been like a minute or something, traveling faster. It, it's weird. This is what I can't wrap my head around is like the timing of it all, but you know me. I just, I overthink things, right, so. Yes, we're tired. Yes, there's no relief. Yes, the Cylons keep coming after us time after time after time. And yes, we are- D you, This is the other thing as well, right? It always gets me in sci-fi when this happens, right? If there is like some sort of faster than light speed traveling happening, especially in some sort of chase, like the navigation systems on board have to be absolutely like the most precise things you've ever seen in your life like cannot be any sort of uncertainty to be able to completely arrive in the same place that the other people have jumped to at like faster than light speed like think about it like this like say you know you were given a compass and you were told okay like go north for five miles like directly north but you can only look at the compass every mile to know that you're going like in the right direction 
if you're walking quite slowly, right, and you start to drift from north a little bit, just because, like, you've headed roughly in the right direction, but, right, you sense direction, you're never going to know if you're going in a truly straight line. Like, if you ever drift ever so slightly when you're moving slowly, you can then correct again, and then you move a little bit slower, and then you can correct again. But if you're running and you start drifting, you're going to drift more because you're traveling faster. And then when you correct, you're going to be even more off course from the original, like, five miles due north heading you were given. Now, imagine that analogy just, like, scaled up to, like, light speed and huge distances, right? Like... The navigation systems on board these ships have to be absolutely, like, the precision on them, it must be absolutely insane if you think about how big space actually is. Not only for them to end up in roughly the right location in space, but close enough so that they can, like, fire on other ships and do damage. Like, it's absolutely ridiculous. And I always think this when I watch sci-fi, that, like, the uncertainties must be down to like the 20th decimal place or something or even more for them to be able to do this. But as we just said, I do overthink these things, don't I? Travis. No enemy contacts. Maybe their navigation systems finally had a glitch. <laughs> Uncertainties finally creeped in. They didn't appear in the right place. <laughs> oh, at least I made myself laugh. Thank the Lord of Cobo. You don't know how relieved we are to see you. Roger that, Olympic carrier. Can I ask you about your whereabouts? We had trouble with our FTL drive. It took us almost three hours to fix. See, three hours to them. It's only been 45 minutes to these guys on Galactica, right? So there's definitely some time dilation at work here. If the ship poses a threat to us, we have to eliminate that threat. Ooh, I like that. Did you see it, like, fire its thrusters like that? Usually when you watch sci-fi and you've got, like, spaceships all, like, zooming around as if they're in, like, Earth's atmosphere and there's some sort of air resistance to, like, actually able them to turn like that. To actually be able to turn in space, you need like thrusters you need to fire gas in one direction so that you go in the other direction right it's like newton's third law of motion like every action has an equal opposite reaction right and so it's really nice to actually see a sci-fi show put that into action i really liked that well done matter star galactica which is called 33 oh god these are filthy well <laughs> Her cabinet is fractured into factions, and now I'm facing Aaron Burr. Uh. 